Hi everybody, I'm speaking to Dr. Liam Hackett and he is the founder and CEO of Digital Label. Doctor, what does the company do? Uh, so we're the largest anti-bullying charity in the world and uh, we know from our research that around one in two of all young people have experienced bullying at some point. And so we deliver pioneering anti-bullying support on a digital environment. We also uh, deliver global campaigns to challenge how society thinks and behaves around the issue of bullying. And we also produce pioneering research to help us understand the complex nature and dynamics of bullying so we can innovate to deliver the solutions. You are giving a keynote speech. Tell me a little bit about that. So the keynote speech is, it looks at the journey of Digital Label and how I got into the career that I'm in today. And um, I really want to deliver some of the key lessons that I've learned over the past six years and how we've grown Digital Label from being a very small organization to being a global entity with offices in the UK, in the US, and operating one of the largest websites in the world. And so in this keynote, I'm really focusing on some of the key lessons that I've learned and giving my tips and advice for anybody who wants to grow and scale an international organization. Organization. What lessons have you learned that may help other in their career path? I think one of the big things I'm talking about today is the whole idea of rejection and how we are all terrified of being rejected and it can often have a nuanced impact on your life and it can prevent you from seizing new opportunities, it can restrict the growth of your business, it can restrict your own personal growth and so I'm talking about how you overcome those fears and also recognize that a fear of rejection is having an impact on your life. Um, there's also um, a model that I'm going to be talking about called entrepreneurial manic depression and um, it's a funny story how I found it because when I started in business I was actually really concerned about my own mental health because I was having days where I just felt like I could take over the world and then other days I just felt like everything was against me I couldn't sleep and it was this constant cycle and so I googled my symptoms I know you're not meant to do it but I did it and I found this amazing article by Tim Ferriss and it's called entrepreneurial manic depression and it is this cycle of emotions that you go through and it gives some really good advice on what you should do when you're at the highs and what you should do when you're at the lows. I'm also going to be talking about stress. I'm going to be talking about the importance of having a good supportive network of people who not only advise you but challenge you. Um, and then I'm going to be talking about core motivators and doing something that you really, really love and really enjoy and building your business around that core motivator. Doctor, what motivates you to do what you do? Well, I was bullied myself at school for 10 years and um, the, the way in which Stitcher Label started was I posted about my experiences online and I had hundreds of people message me and so I realized that this was an issue that A affected a lot of people but also B the internet could be a really powerful tool to connect those people together and so the motivation for Digital Label and the drive really comes from my own experiences but then also seeing the experiences that so many young people have and the kind of impacts that it has on their mental health their well-being their physical health I mean it's profound and so Digital Digital Label has become a global organization. We're incredibly innovative. I mean, we became the first organization to ever understand the reasons why people bully and help them overcome some of those issues, uh, which is a really alien concept for our sector. Um, and so that kind of first for innovation is something that really excites us as an organization and helps us grow and expand the services that we offer today. Can you give me a reason of why people bully? Yeah, so quite often it's in response to something stressful or traumatic. Um, they could also be projecting how they feel about themselves onto other people. Uh, we also know that the nature and dynamics of bullying between genders changes. So guys tend to be slightly more aggressive. They're also the most likely to bully and le less likely to report it. And when you look at the whole construct of masculinity on a societal level, I mean, young guys are taught that it isn't okay to be vulnerable, they have to be aggressive, they have to be stoic. And so this, this, the way this comes out is in really destructive behaviors like bullying. We also know that young girls are under an immense amount of pressure to look a certain way, and often it reduces self-esteem. And so quite often that, that low self-esteem is projected onto other girls, which results in things like appearance-based bullying. And so there's so many root issues that we've really uncovered with our research and we're trying to tackle it head on to challenge those issues on a societal level. What are your thoughts about bullying in the workplace? It's really interesting when you look at how the behaviour of bullying changes throughout your life cycle and we almost see it as an inverted bell curve because 
what you find is in primary school and in the workplace, it tends to be more nuanced and behavioural um, and indirect. So it would be me isolating you from the group, for example. Whereas in high school, it tends to be more attitudinal based. So I would say, well, actually, you're not hanging around with us because I don't like you or because you're a girl or whatever it is that makes you unique. And so when you correlate the kind of bullying that you typically experience in early childhood um, with workplace bullying, they're actually very, very similar. I think what we find from a lot of people who experience bullying in a workplace, it's quite often so nuanced that they don't realize it's actually happening until it's a Sunday evening and they're that anxious about going to work. They're just so incredibly unhappy. Or sometimes, you know, some, uh, the final straw breaks the camel's back and something happens. And I think there's this idea and perception in society that bullying is just something that happens in high school and it can't possibly affect people in the workplace, but it can and it does. And I think when you look at people who bully in a workplace, quite often it's a fight for power. Um, many of them will have experienced bullying themselves at school and it's almost a protection mechanic to prevent them from being victimized in the workplace. And so it's a really, really interesting dynamic. Very interesting, Doctor. Thank you very much and enjoy the rest of the events. You too, thank you. Thank you.